So in this question, we're asked to calculate the time required for a package to hit the ground after it is released from a hot air balloon. So we have a hot air balloon that has a package, and the hot air balloon is rising at a speed of 12 meters per second. And it's important to note that when the package is dropped, its initial speed will also be 12 meters per second. A lot of times when something is dropped in a physics problem, we say that the initial velocity is zero. But in this case, the package is already on its way up, so that when it's dropped, its initial velocity is the same as that of the balloon. So we have to make sure we put in 12 meters per second as opposed to zero meters per second. Other information that we know is the acceleration of the package. It's in free fall, so the acceleration is negative 9.8. We also know the vertical displacement of the package. The package kind of moves upward when it's let go, and then it falls downward to the ground. And overall, the question tells us that the vertical displacement is 80 meters. We have to be careful to note that that vertical displacement is actually negative 80 meters because the package is moving downward overall. Now we can actually use the equations of kinematics to calculate the final velocity of the package the moment that it hits the ground. And that'll actually be the answer to part B. And then we'll go back and solve for the time. It's actually easier in this case to find the final velocity first. So from kinematics we have the following equation. And if we plug in our known parameters, we're going to easily be able to calculate the final velocity. Your calculator may return a positive value for the final velocity, but we have to be aware that the package is moving downward as it's striking the ground, so its velocity must be negative at that point. And you should have calculated negative 41.4 meters per second. Now that's actually going to be the answer to part B. Strictly speaking, part B is only asking for the speed, so the final answer for part B would actually just be 41.4 meters per second. Speed is not a vector quantity, so we don't have to include the negative sign, which indicates the direction is downward. We can just use the positive answer. Now that we have the final speed, we're going to be able to easily calculate the time required for the package to hit the ground. So once again, one of our kinematics equations looks like this. And we can go ahead and plug in the final velocity the initial velocity and the acceleration and then we'll be able to calculate the time. And the time should have come out to 5.45 seconds. If you have any trouble with the math involving any of these calculations please let me know and I'd be happy to follow up with a response.